Aloha. Mahalo for joining. Are any of you folks neighborhood board members? Aloha. Oh. Mahalo for joining. Oh my. Okay. Um, Sydney from Haleiwa. How are you doing, Sydney? Brooke from Kahala. Kaapuni Kama said, nope, not a board member, but came to check it out. Right on. Glad you guys are here. Mahalo for joining us uh, for another episode of Aloha Rising. Uh, today, our focus is neighborhood boards here on Oahu. Um, it is the only county currently that has a neighborhood board system. And we'll get into the details of that in a few minutes. But before we do, I just wanted to share, uh, really, again, revisit what Aloha Rising is, why we're doing it. Um, we started it out last year. Uh, as an opportunity to engage, um, given the circumstances of all of us being confined to uh, our homes and our offices um, uh, and, and not being able to gather in person and really uh, focusing on civic engagement in the Hawaiian community and what civic engagement means. And looking, you know, obviously last year was an election year and we, we took a deep dive into uh, voter engagement and, and, the, and the voting process, and especially with the new mail-in ballot uh, voting system, we wanted to make sure everybody was aware. And you know um, that was that was successful. Um, we saw turnout increase uh, immensely in our elections, uh, given that everyone who was registered received a ballot in the mail. Um, but we also touched on the fact that voting is just one tool in the toolbox of civic engagement. And there are many different ways and opportunities for us to engage. And we talked about why we should engage and why it's part of our history um, to, to be engaged in our communities and why we have a kuleana to do that and, and how we connect that kuleana. If, if our pride and our, our passion is in our communities and our culture and the work that we do uh, with our ohana and um, our communities, you know, how that connects to um, civic engagement and our civic kuleana. Um, <clears throat> and so voting is just one of those tools and, and uh, we're, we're touching on some of the other tools in the toolbox, you know, there's uh, 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 boards and commissions that we'll be uh, uh, exploring next week. Um, in the past, we've talked about um, nonviolent direct action, um, you know, protest as a means of participating in in democracy and, and, and now uh, another um, opportunity for us to engage here on Oahu is our neighborhood boards. Um, and we'll get into some of the details in a moment, but yeah, that's why we're here and mahalo to all of our guests. And now we'll, we will uh, turn to our guests and allow each of you to introduce yourselves and we'll get into the nitty gritty of neighborhood boards. So mahalo for joining us and we'll start off with um, Rep Eli. And I just wanna touch on the fact that we are very well aware that there was only one Wahine um, joining us today. We reached out to a number of neighborhood board members and tried to get a good mix, but given the timing, um, just subject to folks availability. And, um, you know, it just so happens Rep Eli was the only one that could, uh, Wahine that could join us today. So we are aware, um, we always try to be cognizant of that. And I, I uh, mahalo you for joining us, Rep. And you know, more power to you being the singular Wahine voice uh, here with us today. Yeah, yes, so you mahalo cannot, for joining us. You cannot forget the Wahine. <laughs> but um, aloha, my, my name is Daislin Eli. I am a Nanakuli girl, uh, born and raised on a homestead in Nanakuli. I um, served on the Nanakuli Ma'ili Neighborhood Board, board number um, 36. Um, I actually represent uh, my same district, my same community. Um, it encompasses Ma'ili, Nana Kuli, Ko'olina, Nana Kai Gardens, um, Honokai Hale, and Kalailo. Mahalo, mahalo for joining us, Rep. Representative. Um, okay, moving, we'll, we'll go to another former uh, neighborhood board member who's now also a member of the state legislature as a senator. Mahalo for joining us, uh, Representative Kyo Kalole. Aloha Davis, aloha everyone. Uh, mahalo for having me here. I'm Jared Kyoho Kalole. I'm from Kaneohe, my ohana is from Kaneohe and I served on the Kaneohe Neighborhood Board before I ran for a state representative. And then uh, uh, after four years in the house, then I ran for the Senate 
representing Kane Ohe from uh, Ahui Manu Valley of the Temples area uh, all the way to uh, Ka'elepulu and Kailua. So that includes Olomana and the Castle, Castle Hospital uh, area, Kauai Nui, Aikahi, and all of Kane Ohe. Uh, so I, I initially ran for the neighborhood board because uh, I didn't even run. I got on the Kaneohe neighborhood board because there was a housing development being proposed down the street from my ohana, uh, our family, um, uh, like homestead really, there's like 10 houses and it's all ohana land. And down the street, there was a housing development being proposed. And so the family and all the neighbors came to a neighborhood board meeting in Kaneohe. And before they asked me to come, and before I went to the meeting, I, I checked the minutes from the last thing and I noticed that the that exact area, our neighborhood, <coughs> was a vacant uh, neighborhood board position. So I figure instead of going to the neighborhood board to just yell, yell and grumble, I, when they asked for volunteers to serve the position, I volunteered and then they just appointed me. So that's how I got on the neighborhood board. So happy to talk story right about this. Yeah, mahalo, mahalo for that uh, story. We are, we'll probably ask you to kind of, uh, expand on that a little bit in a couple minutes. Uh, mahalo for joining us, Senator. I know you have a, you folks, both of you folks, you legislators, you have an extremely busy schedule. So thank you very much for taking the time out to join us today. Um, and our last panelist is uh, Daniel Kaanana, also from Kaneohe and a current neighborhood board member. Mahalo for joining us, Daniel. Hey, mahalo. Uh, first off, Davis, Sam, mahalo for including uh, all of us. You know, I'm, I'm humbled to be able to participate in this opportunity amongst, uh, amongst such, you know, amazing um, other panelists, you know, including the rep and, and senator. So mahalo nui for including me. Uh, just a little bit about me. I'm currently uh, serving on the Kaneohe Neighborhood Board, just like uh, Senator, uh, board number 30. I uh, currently serve as the vice chair of the Neighborhood Board and also participate in some of the other community um, committees that we have on the board. So I know we might be able to talk a little bit about that today during our discussion, but you know, I think being a part of the neighborhood board is it's very humbling and it's very rewarding uh, because you get to serve not just um, within the community, but it's very grassroots, you know, and you get to meet the people that you're actually impacting. So I'm super excited to talk more about this today and uh, mahalo again for having us. Mahalo, Daniel. Okay, and last but not least, our co-moderator today, uh, Samuel, uh, Sam Kippin. Um, and, you know, just, you know, Sam, I just want to, before we get started, um, we invited Sam to join us because uh, he spearheaded an effort uh, right, you know, before the last election cycle, which the neighborhood boards are every two years. So back in 2018, 19, he was, he spearheaded an effort to really um, convene uh, and put out a kahea to multiple Native Hawaiian organizations and community groups to um, get Hawaiians to run for these neighborhood board positions. So mahalo for uh, spearheading that, Sam, and you've been continuing the work since that time. Uh, so really appreciate you joining us in the work that you've been doing. And um, you know, after you introduce yourself, I know that you have some, some data, some of the numbers to show us on why, you know, the makeup of the boards. And, and really, it kind of helps us see how we can, you know, numbers wise, what we can do to make a difference um, and really how accessible um, this neighborhood, you know, this, this system is uh, for us to take seats of leadership and decision making to affect our communities. Yeah, so mahalo, Sam, welcome. Aloha kako, my name is Sam Kippen and uh, I work at Kamehameha Schools in the Community and Government Relations Division. Uh, we lead Kamehameha Schools advocacy uh, for our organizational priorities. We are also really uh, invested in supporting OEV leadership in the different ways that that manifests, particularly in the civic realm, uh, whether that be through voting, through completing one census, and you know what we're talking about today, of course, the neighborhood boards and the neighborhood board elections. We know civic engagement is something that's, that's really significant, um, that it allows our, our voices, our collective voices to be heard in the political process and the decisions that impact us. And that's something that's really, really important. Um, so first I just wanna say uh, mahalo to our panelists for joining us to discuss this, this really significant opportunity 
that we have in 2021 with the neighborhood board elections. And also uh, mahalo to Davis and OHA for all the work that they have done on this and for inviting me to participate in this conversation as well. Um, so with that, I think we can just roll right into a little bit of background on the neighborhood boards and kind of what's transpired over the past couple of years. So there's been a lot of collective effort that's gone into informing our Lahui about the opportunity to engage in the neighborhood boards. Um, and first, we can just give a little bit of high level context, the idea of representation. So we live in a representative democracy and representation really matters. Native Hawaiians, if you look at, the, look at this slide here, Native Hawaiians were about 25% of the population. Uh, when we look at governments, we don't necessarily see that 25% parity level of representation. For example, 12 of 76 of our state representatives, our state senators are Native Hawaiian, four of 76 our Native Hawaiian women, and we're lucky to have two of our Native Hawaiian legislators here today with us. But from a parity, uh, from an equity standpoint, 12 of 76 does not add up to 25%. So in the next slide, we can discuss ways to address equitable representation. And there are many ways to address it actually. But one way that we have identified is to look to the grassroots of government, the neighborhood boards. So we have some encouraging statistics here. We see that six out of seven of our sitting Native Hawaiian legislators from Oahu began their careers in elected office on a neighborhood board. So it is a proven pathway to leadership for our people. Again, from a Kamehameha Schools lens, we're invested in supporting WeV leadership. We know that neighborhood boards are one place for our people to gain experience in government, to build relationships with community stakeholders doing the work, uh, to have a say in the conversations that trickle up from that grassroots level through our political process. And, and finally, to serve in a way that is really rooted in community, in local communities. If you folks happen to have seen Kanao Kana's uh, video about neighborhood boards, I think that they said it in a really intelligent way. Uh, they compared neighborhood board engagement, that type of civic engagement, to something more like an ahupua system. So maybe something that our community uh, is really naturally suited for. And the final thing on this uh, on this slide that's really exciting. Many folks don't realize that this less visible, super local Oahu election is actually the largest single opportunity to elect new leaders in our uh, in our political calendar. There's 400 plus seats that are up this election, so it's a big opportunity. As we talked about representation, it's a big opportunity for representation. And in the next slide, uh, we can talk a little bit about where we've been so far. So again, recognizing this big opportunity for, uh, for Native Hawaiian leadership in our communities, a collective effort came together in 2019, including OHA, Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, Kamehameha Schools, Kanao Kana. And we saw some really encouraging things during those elections. First thing, most exciting, I think, nearly 25% of the candidates who ran and nearly 25% of the candidates who were elected were Native Hawaiian. Again, back to that idea of equity and representation. We also saw within that, uh, within that wave of folks getting involved, some unprecedented youth engagement. Actually an 18 year old Native Hawaiian high school senior ran for a seat on her neighborhood board 
And when she, she was elected just a few days after she graduated. Um, she actually was honored by the Honolulu City Council as one of the youngest neighborhood board members ever elected. And again, tying this right back to representation, there are other things to think about in terms of representation. What about you know, age representation, youth representation, youth voice? We saw Native Hawaiian, young Native Hawaiians stepping up and getting involved in these elections as well. And that's something that's, that's really exciting. The, the final thing is that um, the, you know, being elected, being a candidate, that's not the only way to be engaged in this, in this civic opportunity. Of course, you, know, you can attend your neighborhood board meetings. You can also be a voter in the process. And we saw the highest voter turnout since the neighborhood board elections went online over a decade ago. So in summary, our Lahui's engagement was inspiring in 2019. Now we have arrived at another neighborhood board election and we have, again, the opportunity to cultivate Oevi leadership at the grassroots. I'm excited to see folks stepping up. I've seen some of my classmates actually uh, perusing the, the neighborhood board website. I've seen some of my classmates uh, stepping up to run. And I'm also extremely excited to hear from our panel today. They have lived this um, they have the experience with it. Some of them have trickled up through our political system, really that leadership ladder in motion. So that's uh, my bit of background. And with that, I will pass back to Davis. Right on, mahalo Sam. Um, you know what, just real quick before we get into the questions for our panelists, get, how, how many neighborhood boards are there total on Oahu? 33. 33 right on okay so yeah there's there's a it's a significant number um of you know that that's a significant number and there's there's a lot of opportunity like sam mentioned um for really to engage at the for folks to really engage at the ahupua'a level so mahalo for that uh very impressive presentation sam and again um, mahalo for all of the the work that you do um and have done to really elevate uh this this opportunity in our community. Um, so yeah, that's uh, getting into some of the questions and you know, Senator Kilkalole, you started off uh, talking a little bit about why you joined your neighborhood board. And that, that's really our, our first question I wanna to pose to you folks. So um, maybe Rep Eli, if we can start with you, you know, why, why did you decide to join your neighborhood board and, and what was it like to, to file for candidacy and run? Um, actually, I was, initially appointed as well. Um, I was just hanging out at the neighborhood board meetings. Um, well, not just hanging out. I was really um, just there to listen to the mana'o that was being shared. Um, my particular neighborhood board is attended by many kupuna. And, you know, there's a lot of information and just historical information that gets shared at our neighborhood board meetings. Um, you know, a lot of them have who serve on the neighborhood board have been serving for a very long time. My my current chair has been there for a very long time, and you know she's done significant work. She's a wahine, she's a Native Hawaiian, she's a beneficiary, you know, on the homestead. Um, so it's really inspiring to see, um, you know, to see wahine and other community members, you know, get involved and get engaged and you know, not just sit and listen like how I initially, you know, was there to do, but actually to participate <clears throat> and to lead the conversations that are going on. Um, so really, I think just seeing that example of, like I mentioned, my, um, you know, my current chair, Patty Teruya, and other, you know, others who <coughs> serve on the neighborhood board, I think was a, a big push for me to to, to, to get going, you know, and of course, like, you know, you have your kupuna there who are like, you know, you want to be involved, you want to be engaged, well, get going then, you know, get up there. And I think that's important culturally, you know, to be um, not just led, but, you know, supported by your kupuna to take these types of positions, because sometimes it can be scary, you know, especially if, you know, for somebody like me who had never been politically active up until my participation in the neighborhood board. I, I was community, you know, like on a community level, I was involved. You know, I, I did several projects within the community, but I never engaged in that manner. So I think 
that was that was my initiation was you know just seeing the example being set and having kupuna really support and encourage me to to get going you know because like i just remember um one of the kupuna that was there she was like you know we're not going to be here forever you guys you know you younger generation you guys better get going you better get involved and uh, that was really important and significant to me Mahalo, uh, Representative. Okay, uh, uh, up next, Daniel, if you can share, um, you know, why you decided to join and, and what was it like to run for uh, this elected seat? You know, I gotta be honest, you know, I wanted to kind of echo what Rep Eli mentioned just now about kind of transitioning from being a part of the crowd to being a part of the process, right, and then getting engaged and I think the biggest uh, revelation that I found, not just at the beginning, but also through you know my service on the board, is that there are a lot of people that want to hear, especially the younger Hawaiians, right? They want to hear our, our, our manao and, and have you know our thoughts brought to the table, you know. And I think for me, like being a part of that process and really realizing that we do have a lot to contribute, you know, has been a game changer, you know. Um, but to answer your question, right about the process of actually running through the election i'll admit it was a little intimidating right because growing up you know my mom and dad they vote right and you see all of these uh, elected politicians on tv and you know it, it's a it's a really big thing right you put yourself out there but the beautiful thing about the neighborhood boards is that it always comes back to community right and people are not elected off of who has the nicest um uh, Palaka t-shirt or Palaka collar shirt or who has the best commercials It's who is there and, and people know you from a community standpoint right it's all about the relationships so you're going to get elected because people trust you because they know you because they know you're out there right so you know it's it, it, it's a better environment I think for young leaders to step into because it's a lot more comfortable you have a lot of people around you that support you and I think you know, just overall, it is a really good experience to get your feet wet without worrying about drowning. You know, like you are exposed to many different issues within the community. You're exposed to uh, many of our elected leaders in various departments, even our elected officials, you know, so you form these relationships at a very intimate level. But at the end of the day, you have your whole community behind you, as long as you're supporting your community, right? That's the first and foremost thing I think I really want to emphasize is it's all about you know, it always comes back to community and, and, and standing up for the community and being there and doing what's right for our community. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Yeah, mahalo, Daniel. I appreciate that. And mahalo for your service. Um, Senator, is there anything you wanted to add, you know, about, you know, why you, why you decided to serve on the neighborhood board and what it was like to run for the first time? Why well, I, I uh, like I said earlier, I was appointed but I wanted to run for office okay. from before that. And it was an opportunity to serve and, and uh, some mentors of mine recommended doing it because Daniel is right. You get a good feel for even uh, what Stacy Lynn said, you, you get a feel for the community right off the bat. You know, I'm, I don't know how it is in every neighborhood board, but I appear before the Kailua, Kaneohe and Kahalu boards and they start every meeting off with the HPD report on crime in the area. And then but the fire department report, you hear from the mayor and the mayor's representative on the status of projects. There's an open forum for members of the community to come. And when there's something going on in a neighborhood that's a problem, the community comes, the people from the neighborhoods, they come and they voice their, uh, they, they make their voices heard and, uh, and elected officials are there like myself and we, we got to answer to them. And so it really is an outlet for the community and, uh, and it's an important thing. I think as, as Hawaiians, you know, um, uh, it's not just about, you know, if you wanna work for our lahui, the, the, then it's about aina, but it's also about people. And you get both of those in serving in the neighborhood board and you get it in the community that you're in and you get it at a, at a grassroots level. So I think it's really important. Right on, mahalo for that Senator. And, you know, I think that's a good segue to Next round of questions from um, from Sam talking about you know the pathways to leadership. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, going back to you know one of the points that we saw in the in the background, six out of seven of our Native Hawaiian legislators 
having served on neighborhood boards before they reach their current position. You folks really exemplifying that, uh, taking that ladder uh, up, up the leadership uh, chain. How did, do you think that your service on a neighborhood board helped to prepare you for higher office? And I can start with uh, Representative Eli. Um, I would say that the, the neighborhood board, it really, um, I think for most of us, if especially if you're born and raised in your community like I was, you're already rooted in your community. You know, your heart is already there. Well, you see these different things going on around you, you know, be it crime, um, be it traffic, you know, and, and you want to do something about it. I think one of the things that really resonated with me was just by participating, being on the board. And like I said, having the opportunity to hear from our community members and our kupuna talk about like how long we've been waiting for this, that, or, or anything else. Um, I think the most important thing was the connections um, that you make with people. Um, for example, you know, something that I'm super passionate about even now being a legislator, you know, is crime, you know, and violence that's going on in my community, especially against Native Hawaiian women. And being on the neighborhood board, it gave me the opportunity to connect with other Wahine Native Hawaiians who don't just reside in my district, but who are actually visiting from outside of the district, for example, right down the road in, you know, Kapolei Homestead. So I was able to connect with them. They run their own neighborhood security watch, you know, like they help, you know, just kind of like um, lay the path for me on how to organize and how to do something like that. And I think eventually, you know, just being involved, um, you know, with strong mana wahine, you know, like that, it gave me, you know, the courage and the support that I needed to eventually, you know, consider running for higher office. I. I never thought I would be in political office. Like it was never, um, you know, a super big goal of mine. Um, I really, I knew I wanted to have a family. I knew I wanted to to live in, you know, the district I, I serve. I knew I wanted to live in Nanakuli. I, I never thought I would run for political office, but you know, when you see the need and when you see the kuleana that is there for you, um, especially being on the neighborhood board, because at least once a month, you're gonna be hearing directly you know, from the community, what is going on, what is not taking place that they want to happen. And, you know, I think, you know, that kind of um, interaction with other leaders, it, it, it really helps, you know, like it really pushes you to, to look beyond, you know, beyond being on the neighborhood board and, and possibly running for political office, you know, and I think that's a great thing. And I hope that, you know, the examples that we're setting will encourage other Native Hawaiians to participate. I'm not gonna be in political office forever. I encourage, you know, young people to look at opportunities to become leaders. And, and I say that because that was the example that has been set for me as a neighborhood board member. You know, I had other, you know, community members who had served who said the same thing, I cannot be here forever. And that's why I mentioned that earlier because that stays in my mind. You know, we have to be preparing, you know, the next generation to take our lead, you know, so that they can keep carrying on like what we are fighting for in our district. So that's my, my mana on it. Mahalo representative that that was, yeah, I think, you know, very, very illustrative of the power of, of the connection between community and government, not just government. All, all you were saying about it being a place to hear from the people and the people doing the work. Uh, and I really appreciate you sharing about your journey. Next, uh, Senator, if you could share a little bit about uh, how Neighborhood Board prepared you for uh, your, your current position. Well, I think, you know, the main reason why I think I got elected to begin with was I went through my district and I knocked on as many doors as I could. I knocked on thousands of doors of residents in the community and introduced myself to them and asked them what they thought. And you get a lot of practice at that at the neighborhood board and you do it as a group. So not all the pressure is just on you. 
But the other thing is you learn about all these neighborhood community concerns. You know, if there is a drug house, uh, I've been in neighborhood board meetings where the neighbors come to make, a, make it an issue. If there's a, a road project that's screwing up traffic, people come. Uh, you learn all sorts of things about the community. For example, the, whenever there's a, uh, a construction project over a certain size, normally uh, in order for the, the builders to get permits, they got to go present before the neighborhood board. And so you figure you, you, it's a great place to be Mahoy because you hear everything going on in the community. Uh, and then so like an example that turned into legislation later when I became a, a legislator is uh, there was a big sewer project in Kaneohe that had been uh, in underway for a long time when I got on the board. And, you know, when I started asking the other members who'd been on there longer, you know, like what the background was, all the history, just like Stacey Lynn is talking about, it led to this broader discussion about sewer infrastructure in Kaneohe and on the windward side. And then uh, when I went and had discussions with the folks in Kahalu'u, this whole issue of cesspools came up and how the, the shorelines in the bay get shut down when there's sewage spills. And the more we started looking into that issue, the more we realized it was a statewide issue, which ultimately led to uh, bills that we passed over the last five years to crack down on cesspools and to try and get folks to convert out so that they're not polluting the water right at the shoreline. And none of that would have happened if those discussions weren't constantly being brought up by the community at the neighborhood board. So that's how that stuff can really gain momentum statewide because you realize it's a problem all over the place. Uh, but, but unless you get somebody from the community really kind of explaining how it impacts them on a neighborhood level, I don't think you get that same kind of um, interest, you know? Malo, Senator, yeah. for showing you about that um, and the importance of engaging. And, uh, and really, I think that was an extremely good illustration of the fact that the policy really travels up. It travels up from the community and, it, and eventually it might be something that you are working on in your position at the state capitol something that started at the neighborhood board level. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate, appreciate that perspective. I think slingshotting off of that um, to Daniel, you know, from your, from your position as a neighborhood board member, as vice chair in Kaneohe, how have the boards helped you to work collaboratively with the agencies and the elected officials uh, that serve your community? You know, that's a really good question. I would say, you know, being being elected to the neighborhood board, it it, it comes with the responsibility, right? And and it is a privilege for us to be chosen by our community to be representing them as a board, right? And you know, it, it's essentially our community has designated us to represent on them on behalf of you know of, of the entire community, right? So I think having the privilege of not just being a part of the board, but also having that firsthand connection with a lot of our leaders, whether they're our elected officials or even um, some of the members of our local agencies, it's been helpful because, you know, they all, that being on the board allows us that access, but also being a part of these community meetings, not just the official board meetings, but also all of the behind the scenes meetings that we have within the community, right, on a monthly, if not weekly basis, it's good because it helps us to bridge that gap, right? You know, there's oftentimes a disconnect if you will, between um, you know, what we have as far as like our political laws and, and, and political bills that may be going through the system and what the community is actually looking for, right? And I think the board's a really nice job of creating the bridge between community and what we really need, right? As far as the laws and, and the bills that are currently being, being pushed through. And I think you know, on top of that, the biggest issue is it, it always comes back to coming back and listening to what the people really want, right? Listening to our communities. And I think having the boards there to really um, speak on behalf of the community, or even more importantly, to pull members of the community into the conversation, I think is a really key role of our boards. You know, and I think it, it's something that is under, um, you know, not a lot of people know about it. I think more and more as we've, uh, our communities become more civically engaged, we're starting to understand more what role the neighborhood boards serve in the entire process. But I think it's a very important strategic and key role 
um, not just for our political system, but more importantly, for our communities as a whole. Mahalo. <clears throat> okay, right on. A great, um, thank you for sharing that, Manao. Um, you know, moving things along, um, you know, if we can, uh, again, talking about this pathway to leadership and, and, and really, you know, uh, starting to awamo kuleana, uh, there's no better way than to jump right in. Um, so is there something each of you folks can share, uh, you know, once you got into your seat, what were some of the things that you had to learn quickly? And uh, maybe we can start with uh, Senator Keokolole. You know, once you get on the board, uh, I don't know that there's anything that we, I really had to learn quickly. It was more a matter of paying attention and, and just learning about all this, uh, all the things that are going on. You, you really get good eyes on the community. Like I said, at, at every neighborhood board meeting, at least on our side, it starts with the police report on crime in the area. Then it goes to the fire department report on, on fires and emergencies in the area for the month. You know, they come every month. Uh, then you hear, uh, well, the schedule is different for every board and all the boards have their own different dynamic. And it really is, I think, more respective of the community. In Kaneohe, nine o'clock, we pow, closing the windows in the cafeteria. Kahalu'u, I usually go on somewhere between 10 and 10.30 at night and they start at seven, you know? It's because they, they discuss everything. They talk a long time and they, they really get into a lot of detail. Uh, you get community concerns and then the, the, the council person, the mayor's office presents the, um, and takes questions. And then the governor's office presents and takes questions. The legislators come, the, counts, the county council people. So any question about anything, there's access to someone who has some sort of expertise or connection to the government that you can learn from. What's the process? You kind of make changes to, my feeling is, you know, if we want to assert our kuleana and our and our authority as Hawaiians to manage our our own aina and and determine things for ourselves, you, you know, you, you have to be able to offer alternatives to the system. And the neighborhood board is a really good way, low impact, uh, in terms of your own. Um, you can you, you know you can work. You can keep another job. You don't have to make this huge sacrifice and commitment to run uh, for legislative office. You can join the neighborhood board and you can really learn about the system. And you learn really quickly where the flaws are, especially how they apply in your community and how they impact people's lives because those people show up and they tell you what's going on and how it's impacting them. So if we wanna change the system, this is a really good way in my opinion uh, to do that because you learn about, you learn from people um, what's wrong and what needs to get fixed. So mahalo for that, um, Senator. <clears throat> uh, Rep Eli, what's... Uh... You know, one thing that you learned, had to learn quickly once jump, you know, starting your, your term on the, on the board. Um, the, the one important thing is that there's going to be disagreement. You know, um, I think that's important um, to understand that conversations are going to be had. And even if you're super passionate about it and, and you believe in it, there's going to be others in your community who don't feel the same way that you do. And it doesn't, you know, make them wrong. Or it doesn't make you wrong. It's just this is a conversation that needs to be had. So I think the experience of the neighborhood board really helps to prepare you for those kinds of difficult conversations that we are gonna have to have as a people. You know, we were once a nation. You know, not everyone is gonna agree on everything, but there has to be, you know, some some level of understanding amongst ourselves that, you know, some, there are gonna be some things that we're gonna have to agree to disagree on. And the other thing is that with that being said is that you also have to listen, you know, just because you think what you're talking about is super important and, and it's right, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, all of a sudden you ignore the voices and the words of your other community members who are in opposition. And I think that carries over even when you get into political office, because if you are already used to having those tough conversations in a neighborhood board setting, it won't be such a shock when you have to experience that, you know, in as a legislator. 
um, you know, like right now gaming is, <laughs> is a big um, conversation that's going on right now. Um, you know, myself, I am in opposition of DHHL putting a casino on homelands. Um, that doesn't mean I'm gonna be disrespectful to those that do agree, but I'm gonna be mindful of the voices that I feel are not being heard. And so that experience from the neighborhood board, understanding how important it is to hear everyone from the grassroots level, you know, is important. And I think you learn that in the neighbor, at, you know, serving on your neighborhood board, as well as just attending. So um, that's my, my, my big takeaway from being on the neighborhood board. Yeah, and you know, what a great point, um, Representative, about listening, you know, um, oftentimes just, just gonna kinda uh, run with that for a moment because, you know, oftentimes when you ask people what makes a good leader, a lot of times they'll say a good listener, right? And, and that's something that we kinda take for granted a lot and you know we a lot of times especially in the political realm right we hear oh it's the marketplace of ideas and it's the people with the best ideas that and can advocate for those ideas um, but it also requires listening and you know leadership i think the neighborhood boards are a great training ground for that so i you know because leadership part of that kuleana is is elevating the best ideas and the ideas of the people who maybe aren't uh in those leadership roles yet yeah, and so um, and, what a great point. Just, yeah, and I just want to add that also, like, you know, we will be held accountable, you know. It's not just what we, you know, what happens here at the state capitol. When I go home to my neighborhood board, you know, Nanakulima Ili neighborhood board and be on the other side, you know, my constituents are going to hold my feet to the fire and be like, you know, what did you support? What did you oppose? Why? You know, why did, why did you feel that way? Why did you vote that way? You know, so I think it's important, you know, um, being on the neighborhood board, having that experience and really, you know, engaging and sharing in the monotony of other leaders that, you know, are right there with you, you know. Yeah, mahalo for that. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you, uh, Representative. Uh, Daniel, yeah, can you share, um, you know, one thing that you had to learn quickly in this, uh, this new kuleana you decided to awamo. Hey, I gotta say, it's hard to follow such great answers from Senator and, 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 and the representatives. So <laughs> I hope I do it justice. <laughs> but you know, I, I wanna jump off of what both of them said and kind of bring it together because as I was listening to them speak, I have to say like it really rang really bright in my heart, right? And I think, um, you know, one thing that I, because I work quite closely with, with Senator Kiho Kalole because he represents our district, right? And, you know, this the one thing that kept ringing in my mind as I, I, I heard both of them speak is that at the end of the day, it comes down to trust and integrity and always holding that really close to you as you serve your community, right? Never forgetting that they're the ones that put us here in our seats, right? It wasn't the other way around. And, you know, I think, you know, from a personal experience, one thing I, re I respect the most about the Senator is that yeah, he has a lot of integrity and, you know, he says what he, he's going to do and he does it right. And I think as a community leader and as a representative on the board, that for me, I think was the number one thing that really was driven home fast is that people are going to come to you. They're going to you know explain different situations that are going on. Of course, you definitely want to listen. But most importantly is if you say you're going to do something, make sure you do it because it's all about building the trust and keeping that trust and making sure that people know that every move you're making is always with high integrity. Right on. Mahalo, Daniel. And, you know, um, yeah, those are great responses. And, and, and you know, this is, uh, this is great insight into, you know, what it means to serve in these roles. Yeah, where, you know, you are, you folks are leaders in your communities, but, and, and, but the level of accountability and what representation means, you know, this is this is very insightful. Um, so mahalo again, I uh, can't thank you guys enough. Um, and, you know, to kind of move into the next, we'll, we'll, we have time for a couple more questions. And uh, moving into the next one, you know, one thing I think for, for our community, the neighborhood boards really came to light significantly in the last couple of years because of some um, issues that led to um, some massive demonstrations and protests here on Oahu. Yeah, we had the Kahuku windmills, 
Um, and then the Hunana Niho, uh, uh, you know, protest demonstration um, that took place. And uh, both of those development proposals that were the root of those issues had to make their way through the neighborhood board. And, and I wanna just point to that because when we talk about process, I think we have to really understand that um, and try our best for those of us who know how this works um, and, and work in this day to day, which not everybody does absolutely, you know, by any means, it's important to share uh, this perspective. And that is, we always have multiple kind of bites at the apple, right? And, and while sometimes the, the, the last resort and how we've kind of framed you know, um, nonviolent direct action or demonstration or protest in previous episodes is it's almost like a last resort, right? And that's how we should, we shouldn't look at it as a, as a bad thing or, or, you know, it's part of democracy. It's part of at least the democracy that we've, that we're, the system that we're part of, right? American democracy, protest has always been a, 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 a pillar of that process. However, there's multiple steps in the process and the neighborhood board can be considered one, if not the first step into in, in, when engaging these um, development proposals. And so if these things are important to you, and if they, you know, if you're passionate about, you know, what your community will look like going forward, and if you have strong opinions, or you represent folks um, that have strong positions on how the community should look and, and how growth or, or how things should grow or shouldn't grow. This is absolutely a, a way for you to engage. Um, that doesn't entail getting arrested. Doesn't mean people won't get arrested at some point, but it, it doesn't entail, that's not part of this process, right? This is where you can engage with the developer and really hopefully, um, or even if it's not development, any type of, of project, right? Um, that comes before the board. It's an opportunity to engage and get your input included, right? Um, and, and really, you know, an opportunity to, to look at things from a kukulu perspective versus a kue perspective. And not to say that either one is right or wrong. There's just different, again, different ways to engage. There's multiple bites at the apple. And so with that said, you know, what are, I'm gonna ask you folks, what are some of the big community wins that you may have experienced while serving on the board or one um, issue uh, that sticks out um, in your mind um, from your time serving on the board. And we can start with uh, representative, uh, actually started with Rep Eli last time. Oh no, no, we started with Senator Kiokalole. Kalamai, start with Rep Eli. Um, I really, I was thinking about this and I really think bringing up um, Palehua in my district. So this, wasn't an issue that happened while I was on the neighborhood board, but I could not have gotten, you know, it stopped without the help of my neighborhood board. So Palehua um, was being considered for wind turbines and it was my neighborhood board members, you know, who alerted me to it. And it was actually their mana'o because, you know, they've, most times when you serve on a neighborhood board, like, for some of our members, that's not the only community, you know, engagement, you know, that they're taking part in, like they belong to other boards and for mines, you know, like they belong to other like environmental cultural boards. And so, you know, long story short, they alerted it to me, you know, to me about the project. And I was so upset, like just heated about it and just wanting, you know, I wanted to protest and like figure out how we stop this, but they taught me, um, how to be an intervener in the process, how to gather um, community, you know, opposition to submit to the PUC. And also, um, you know, I had their support, you know, as a representative when I introduced a bill that eventually became a resolution to stop that type of project from going on in my district um, because I have such a predominantly Native Hawaiian community, you know, up until Kapolei Homestead was, you know, being built out, for the longest time, Nanukuli was the largest concentration of Native Hawaiians. And, you know, it brought up conversations about environmental racism, and just the ills that, of all the things that my community has to endure. And 
Um, I just want to bring that up because, you know, the project was stopped. Um, you know, like I said, to make a long story short, the project was stopped. And my community did not have to resort, you know, to put themselves on the front line, you know, to, to, to get arrested, you know, to have that kind of trauma, you know, put onto them. And it was because of the mana'o that I gained and gathered from my neighborhood board members. They taught me how to fight within the system. And that experience um, helped me as a legislator because then the next you know, few town halls that I was hosting, it was about educating and informing my community how to insert themselves into the um, LUC process, you know, so that they understand and, you know, know where the comments need to be put. I did one on the EIS process so that they also understood, you know, what that process was and where we could insert ourselves before it got too far on, you know, into the process. And it was just, you know, out of our hands. And so I think just having, that kind of experience Emma was shared with me by my neighborhood board um, members and community members really helped me to be a better legislator because it taught me how to better inform my community. Um, you know, right before the lockdown for COVID, you know, I was planning um, a town hall on water rights, you know, informing my community, you know, like what was going on and where, you know, we could insert ourselves to, to work within the system. So that we knew what was happening, you know, before it was too late. Um, and you know, to this day, I'm so grateful um, because I I just remember attending the neighborhood board <laughs> meeting, you know, when the group that was proposing this um, wind farm came, and just being able to, you know, call them out on the discrepancies and just the poor planning that they had for my community, you know, with their proposal. So I'm just, that was, that's one experience that I had that I can say, even though I was no longer on the neighborhood board, it was because of the neighborhood board that we were successful at stopping, you know, such a project in my district. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> got a, you know, the, the unmute yourself habit. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you for that representative. Um, great, uh, great story to share. Um, yeah, and I think that, that that's really important, right? When we're talking about process and engaging um, that again, another form of leadership, you know, training others, teaching others, you know, the kuleana to, to share what you know, um, to help others get activated and engaged. So mahalo for that. Uh, Daniel, do you have a, a story or something, an issue that sticks out in your mind from your time on the board? Yeah, you know, I think it's kind of funny we're doing a Zoom call right now because it, it brings to light something that my board went through just recently, you know, with the onslaught of COVID. And, um, you know, long story short, you know, once previous to COVID, you know, all of our neighborhood boards, we had a lot of these in-person meetings, right? So we'd meet at um, our local elementary school in the cafeteria come together as a group and then COVID hit right and all of a sudden everybody was locked down everybody was at home trying to stay safe and it created this major void in our communities where you know people were trying to figure out okay what's going on what's the latest and greatest and yet we have no way to update them and let them know you know what's the latest um you know that's going on as far as any kind of government updates or any kind of even community updates right like, like Senator was mentioning, we'll have HPD and the fire department give updates and all of a sudden people are left without that. You know, and I think the biggest thing for us was as a board was to ensure that we could still create those open venues of communication within our community, right? So we started, we were the first board, I'm proud to say, and I'll, I'll keep saying it, um, that Kani Ohe was the first board to come up with the idea of going virtual, completely virtual. We started, you know, very basic. We had a Zoom account that cre we created, the Kaneohe Neighborhood Board Zoom account, and uh, started just launching out open invitations to the various members of our community. You know, and it was very, very grassroots. And the one thing I'm thankful for is not only did I have an extremely supportive board, but also our leaders, you know, Senator, our, our own elected, um, our, our house reps, 
uh, city council members, they helped us to spread the word through their newsletters, right? And I think, you know, having that intimate connection with each and every one of our community members, uh, it really said a lot, you know, and, and for us, at the end of the day, it was all about making sure we kept everybody in the loop, making sure, you know, everybody was taken care of, making sure that the message was delivered. And ironically, you know, it wasn't as easy as we initially thought. And the biggest obstacle for us was that, you know, the very, the very people that you would think would want that message to be heard, right? Our government, were, they were actually the ones throwing the biggest obstacles our way and telling us, oh no, you can't do that. Oh no, you need to follow Sunshine Law. And of course, you know, we want to make sure we obey all laws, right? But at the end of the day, I think coming back to the, the, the main point, and that is that, you know, we got to take care of our communities, you know, and sometimes you got to get a little aggressive and you got to be bold. And for us, this was, you know, creating these virtual meetings and doing what we could to make sure that we were keeping our communities safe, but at the same time, keeping them informed. You know, so I'm very proud to say, you know, fast forward to today, we're still continuing the virtual meetings. Um, we haven't yet transitioned back to the in-person meetings, but it's a good way for us to connect with our communities. It's a good way for um, people to tune in and it's easy, you know, you can do it from the comfort of your home. So I think incorporating these new technologies and these new and bold ideas have actually helped to grow, you know, community awareness and, and civic engagement um, at a very grassroots level. So it's a small win for our board, but super, super proud of them and, um, you know, very privileged to have had the opportunity to experience something like that. Well, Daniel's being ha-ha because what they did was a kuea act in and of itself. The city and county of Honolulu refused to acknowledge their virtual meetings and they just did them anyway for like four months, right? So we, we went, we attended, lots of people attended, probably more than would normally attend at a Kaneohe neighborhood board meeting unless there was something controversial going on. And so they just, it's so, so, you know, to go back to what you were saying, Davis, it, it really, Arlahui, it, it's not only about the Kue acts, and it's, and it's even not only about when, when and where to insert yourself, it's also about asserting yourself. And I think that's what cannot be lost it, with our Lahui right now too. Whether we fight, whether we agree, disagree, it, it is about asserting yourself and, and kind of, well, and recognizing our own kuleana and then stepping up to the plate. I, I've told people before, you know, like when you look at the Lahui, it's, it's right now the defense is strong, right? All, all of these kue acts that have, that have happened, they really, uh, they really demonstrate that, you know, as a Lahui, we get good defense, but you cannot win, you know, a football game with 10 linebackers right you got to have somebody on offense to to do proactive things to take to take these issues these problems that have been highlighted by these kue acts and do something about it so you know one of the ones that came up in the kaneohe neighborhood board as an example is over the last uh well since i got elected the homelessness issue just has really continued to be a problem in the community and a lot of those issues came up in discussions that we had at the neighborhood board and so one of the proposals that came from the neighborhood board was was um, the desire for them to have a clinic or a site in Kaneohe that the service providers and the folks in the churches working to feed the homeless and provide supplies and things, somewhere they could drive people to to get help. Kind of like how community court works in Waianae. Uh, and so, I, you know, because of the neighborhood board, we worked with the, the, uh, our council person with the two other representatives in Kaneohe. And then we partnered with some of the nonprofits and service providers in the community. And we found a place. And we found it near the school where, because of the neighborhood board, we became, became aware that homeless were coming in and sleeping in the school at night. And the janitors were having to move them away before the kids came. And we wouldn't have gotten those ideas and, and put together what's now a, a homeless service clinic right in the middle of Kaneohe that they coordinate services for, for the whole windward side, unless, you know, unless those ideas came up at the neighborhood board. And I think it's not necessary. So again, it's not just about fighting the system. We gotta have offense, defense, special teams. You know, the, the Buccaneers never won the Super Bowl because of Tom Brady. They, they won it in addition to him. They had a fire D line and they had linebackers flying all over the place. We gotta have, we gotta have all of that. And you know what, what I've found is that people in the community, outside the, the Hawaiian community, they're desperate for leadership, right? right? They will follow if you lead because, because look at what's going on in Hawaii. People just want someone to step up and, and take action on things. And so it can only be us. We need everybody's help on that. And this is one of the ways that you can do it. 
But I'm um, a for that senator, and and I'm a I'm a firm believer that you know, the narrative that Hawaiians only fight with each other is is so uh, disingenuous and misleading. Um, you know, the process, the legal process that you know that was adopted by the Hawaiian Kingdom as well, is is adversarial by nature. It's why people are trained to be lawyers. Um, you know, there's that friction that that commences. And then the decisions are made, right? Based off of how that how people present their positions, and that trickles down all the way down to the community level. Yeah, people propose ideas, whether it be to address homelessness or whether it be to build affordable housing, and the system takes its course, right? And and the process takes its course. Excuse me. And <clears throat> and that friction, I believe, is how you get to the productive. Uh, place that we need to to get to and uh, I think when we fall into the trap of believing that well we're not supposed to argue and disagree it, you, you're cutting our legs yeah and that's just my own personal manao um, but it's it's you know any political science or any any academic political uh, you know in academia any political science theory that you read it really boils down to that the, you know it's meant to be democracy is is meant to be adversarial for the common good, right? Um, so anyway, get off my soapbox. Mahalo for your mana'o. And uh, uh, I will now hand off to Sam. We're coming up on the on the hour. So we'll start to wrap this up. Yeah, mahalo again, you folks. And mahalo, Sam. And uh, yeah, maybe let's it's, it's, uh, close out with some final thoughts. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, yeah, mahalo. You know, I just want to say too that uh, I think that these are really good examples because they show the huge variety of issues that are the purview of the neighborhood boards. There's really no limit to what a board can look at and try to solve with the help of the different stakeholders, community, government uh, in that connecting point. So, you know, they can go on offense, they can go on defense. Uh, I wanna say thanks to Daniel because I didn't know that that, uh, that solution uh, for the neighborhood boards that I enjoy now uh, for yeah. my neighborhood board, I didn't know that was because of you folks. Uh, but you know, in COVID times, that was really difficult. I actually couldn't attend some of the meetings because uh, I was under quarantine because my spouse works in social services and frontline kind of work where she's interacting with people um, really frequently and has to be in quarantine. So that's a really good example of of a of a incremental change that really matters. Um, and has a huge impact. It now it impacts the entire board system. So, anyways, now I'll get off my my soapbox. It looks like we are kind of reaching the end of our time. Actually, I think we've got a couple minutes over, but we're going to end with one final question. Uh, hopefully, the folks that are watching this webinar are seriously considering engaging in these elections, maybe as candidates. So, we'd like to wrap today's discussion with some words of encouragement. In a couple of sentences. Why should folks watching this live stream jump in and run for a seat on their neighborhood board? And let's start with Representative Eli. Okay, um, I would say that, you know, I, I just want to echo what David said, you know, about we don't just fight as Native Hawaiians, you know, amongst each other. You know, we fight hard because we love hard. And as far as the neighborhood boards, you know, we all have a kuleana to our lahui. You know, our callings are just different. And this may be your calling to serve. And it's a privilege. And I, I encourage um, everyone, you know, to engage and to participate. I, I hope, you know, that you find the courage to, to run, you know, for your neighborhood board. But at the very least, I, I, I pray and I hope that you at least attend and engage with your neighborhood board members. So mahalo. Mahalo, Representative. Daniel, why should folks watching today run for the neighborhood board? You know, I think the one thing I would want to leave everybody with after today's um, talk story session is, you know, being a part of the neighborhood board, it's, it's not about, uh, you know, I think uh, people often, you know, misconstrue it as being political, right? And it's, it's not about politics. It's about, you know, community voice, right? And being a part of the discussion and not just a part of the crowd. 
you know, and I, I encourage not just, um, you know, not just the adults, but even some of our younger Hawaiians, right? Some of our, we had a high schooler that, that was elected to the neighborhood board at our last election. Like we need young blood and we need new perspective and, and, and various types of people to bring their mana'o to the table because that's the only way that our communities are going to grow. And that's the only way that our communities are going to move into the direction that's, that's right for us, right? And, and, and what's right for our community is what, 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 what comes from the community, not what comes from outside of the community, right? So as being a part of the voice, right? And, and as being part of the elected leadership and having the privilege to serve, you know, it is a very noble calling, you know? And I think that, you know, I encourage um, anyone who's interested, who even has an inkling of interest, give it a shot. You know, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, and, and I really, really encourage everybody to just give it a shot. Yeah. Mahalo, Daniel. Let's end with Senator Kale Hokalole. In a couple of yeah. sentences, why should folks watching run for the neighborhood board? You know, uh, the queen once told, after the overthrow, the queen uh, once told Hui Kalai Aina that there are certain tools that, um, that the oppressors have given the law Hui and it's incumbent on you to use them. And they took that and they organized their own party and they took over the legislative system and they held it for, for 40 years in the territory, right? Uh, the, the, these neighborhood boards are mechanisms that if you look around the world, lots of places don't have the ability for residents to even voice their concern. In many, many countries around the world, if you grumble about the government, they show up in the middle of the night with machetes or they arrest you and, they, and you then, that's it. You don't get heard from again. And so this is a tool that we should utilize, especially if you feel a calling. Two, two things, two mentors of mine said. One, uh, one said, you know, uh, actually Stacey Lane talked about it. We all have our own kuleana. He said, it's up to you to figure out what it is. And once you do, it's up to you to figure out what to do about it, right? To, uh, to fulfill your kuleana. Uh, another person who, who we just lost, who was a, like a hero and a mentor of mine said, there's no such thing as no can, always can. The only question is how can. So if this is one of the ways for you to get there, to can, then, then go for it. We've done it, it's not impossible uh, and it does make a difference. Thank you, Senator, for those uh, words of encouragement and uh, to our other panelists for encouraging the folks in the audience watching right now. Again, consider the opportunity to lead in your communities. I think uh, Davis has some closing thoughts about the process, uh, so I'll pass it to Davis. Yep, mahalo nui and, and mahalo for those closing remarks. I think those are great words of inspiration and guidance and leadership from each of you. Mahalo nui again for your time, greatly, greatly appreciated. And the reason why we're here today is for neighborhood boards. Um, the elections are coming up uh, and we are coming up actually uh, on the filing deadline to run. And I'm sharing the screen now for the neighborhood board website, which we've dropped a link in the chats in Zoom and on Facebook. Um, really simple to register, just a few clicks. You can do it on the website, doesn't cost you anything. You can file to run up until February 19th, so next week. And then the elections will take place um, the, the last week of April all the way through mid-May. Uh, I believe the elections will start on April 23rd and it will end um, mid-May. Sorry, I don't have the exact date for the elections. Apologize. Um, but you can file next week and then can campaign in your community. I can jump uh, in with the date of the election. Oh, go it's, for it. Uh, go for it, Sam. April 23rd through May 21st. Passcodes are mailed out prior to. Uh, if you're already registered to vote, you'll get one. Um, and you can actually register, you can still register just for this election, but the deadline is also February 19th. Awesome. Mahalo. And it's all, very, it's all online, so you can do it from home. Um, so please take a look at the website, encourage your friends in Ohana to participate and run if you can. Yeah. If can, can. Not, not, no more, no can. Yeah. <laughs> mahalo. Mahalo, gang. Appreciate it. Uh, again, for our legislators taking time out of your very, very busy schedule in the midst of hearings. Um, and mahalo nui for your service and everything you do. Yep. Aloha. Mahalo nui, gang. Aloha. Ahui ho. Mahalo.